So let's talk about cycles. So first of all, we introduce what we call a thermal reservoir or a hot heat source, a heat source, heat source. And often this is at some high temperature. If we color code it, we color code it red, and it's at some temperature TH. And it's hot, so if we put it in communication with the system that is cooler, there can be a transfer of heat from hot to cold, a QH. QH, heat transfer. So let me give some units on this. What would be a good temperature for the, it would be something like Kelvin, right? Temperature in Kelvin, 1,000 Kelvin, 800 Kelvin. And then what would be good units for Q sub H? Heat transfer into a system, maybe kilojoule. What happens if somebody says it's Q dot H? What would be the units implied by that notation? Kilojoule per second, which is a kilowatt. Okay. So this is going into a system. Often these systems run in a circle in a cycle. They run in a cycle, right? So the engine of your automobile, maybe it runs 3,000 revolutions per minute, RPM. You drive to Houston, it takes you an hour to drive there, and that engine's just doing it again and 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 again, a lot of times, right? So maybe when you're driving somewhere, you think, okay, if it takes, uh, to complete a cycle, two revs of my engine, my revolution, uh, my, 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 um, it's going at 2,000, 3,000 RPM. Maybe you look at your tachometer. You have four cylinders. Uh, how many total spark plug fires are there between here and Houston? <laughs> Do some mental math. Yeah, it's a lot. And then, uh, you know, something like that. How many individual strokes are there? So it's a lot. We'll get to internal combustion engines later. So whenever you have a heat engine, because that's what this is, this is a heat engine, and it's running in a cycle, you have to dispose of some heat. We'll color code it like blue to dump it off to a lower temperature, TL, and uh, that's a QL or QC. Either one of you books, different books will use QL or QC. Okay, and I'll probably do that. Low temperature, QL, or cold, C, either one. Now, this is purpose of this heat engine is to turn a shaft, do some work, work out of my system. And so all of these Qs and work all have the same units, kilojoule. Now we can sit here and say, this is a heat engine. It's a power producing or work doing device. It's doing work. Uh, I can apply the first law to the system. And notice that uh, whenever, like in a free body diagram, if you decided that all the unknown forces that were in the x direction were all in the positive x direction, great. And then you calculated a negative 20 kilonewtons for your force, you know, here on a free body diagram in statics, you say, oh, it wasn't in the positive x direction. I calculated a negative answer. That means it's in the opposite direction. True? Sometimes you would sit there in a free body diagram, you anticipate the direction of an unknown force and trying to calculate its magnitude, and you didn't want to get a negative answer, so you assumed it was to the left, not to the right in the direction of negative x, not positive x. Deja vu or not, is this ringing true to you? So your typical convention is, is when f of x is calculated, if it's positive, it's in the direction that way, but in the positive x. But here, you broke the sign convention, and you assumed it was that way. Your diagram preceded the sign convention. It superseded it, right? Something like that. So here it is. Guess what is the positive direction of QL? It's a heat transfer out of my system. Here's my system, the heat engine, and it's positive out. I just deviated from our sign convention. Got it? Do you see the deviation? QH positive in, QL positive out. So I'm going to talk about positive 
uh, kilojoules for both of these. I'm not going to have 20 kilojoules for this one and negative 20 or 18, negative 18 kilojoules for the other one. All right. So the first law says QH is a work or heat transfer in that goes to a work out and a heat transfer out. I think that's the most logical way to write the first law for the system. Everything on this side is an in, and everything on that side is an energy transfer out of the system. Does that make sense? Sure. And now, if somebody comes in and they say, uh, for example, uh, this was 50 kilojoules, right? And you were able to get uh, 10 kilojoules of work. What is the amount of uh, heat transfer that's uh, disposed of or transferred to the low temperature uh, heat sink? This you would might might call this a heat sink. Like this is a heat source. This is a heat sink. What is QL in this case? It's 40. It's 40. It's a positive 40 kilojoules. True. You could play this game day and night. So, okay. Now, the other thing with the heat engine is you have a efficiency. Thermal efficiency. The symbol given, that one. Oh, man, I forgot the name of that symbol. First of all, is it, uh, you know, what, what is it? What is it? Persian? You know, what is it? It's Greek. True. It's not Latin, it's Greek. Greek letter. Okay, so what is the name of that one? Eta. Eta. Good. So it's a ratio. The thermal efficiency is going to be a ratio of what you desire or want. Or want. Something like that. W-A-N-T. What do you really want out of this engine? What do you want it to do? It's a heat engine. Over what it costs or your input, something you have to provide or otherwise it's not going to run. True? That's a good way to remember your thermal efficiency. What you desire, what you want, over what it costs or what you had to provide to it. So in this case, the thermal efficiency is, what do I want? I only have one of three choices. It's W this, as a symbol. True? It's 10 kilojoules in this example. Over what did I have to supply? QH. What about QL? EPA is soon going to be taxing us on thermal pollution. It's coming, just like carbon dioxide pollution, right? Nobody would have believed 20, 30, 40 years ago. Well, you mean if I exhale, if a person exhales, I'm polluting? You're throwing out more CO2 right now as you exhale. You mean if I cook a food over a little fire, I'm polluting the environment? They'll now, yeah, with coal, burning coal. It's in the news. If you're not paying attention, you should because it's going to impact your career as engineers. So anyway, for this example, what was the thermal efficiency? 10 over 50. What is that? One-fifth? 20%. 30%. Not 30 percent. 20 percent is the thermal efficiency for this number, right? All right. So where did the other 80 percent of the heat that came in go? To the sink. That's just what it is. Now we also have uh, refrigeration and heat pumps. Let's talk about refrigeration first. So I have something that's hot, TH, and I have a system running in a cycle. And I don't know why I drew it that way. Let's draw it this way. It doesn't really matter how you draw it, right? I kind of pretend that I was left-handed for a minute and drew it. The, this is right-handed, nothing particular. And then the low temperature. What's the purpose of a refrigeration system? To take heat out of something that's already cold, to keep it cold because it's leaking in to the refrigerator from the sides of the refrigerator. And it's going to take work to do that and then dump everything into the hot kitchen. Or if you have an air conditioning system, dump it outside your car or dump it outside your house. But you have to end up dumping it. Is, uh, is there a first law 
applied to this system? What are all the ins? And what are all the outs? Is a QL an in? Is a work an in? And a QH is an out. And now we don't talk about efficiency, we talk about a coefficient of performance. Now, one of the things that they use either a beta or a gamma in the textbook, why don't we just say COP? Why do I have to remember another Greek letter? Oh, the gamma is a coefficient of performance for the heat pump. Oh, no, it's a beta. The beta is for the refrigeration. So the coefficient of performance for a refrigeration system is defined as what you desire over what it costs. What do you want in a refrigeration system? Three choices. Large QL, large W, or large QH. Do you want to make your kitchen really hot? Do you want to pay CPS a large electric bill at the end of the month? Or do you like to keep the refrigerator cold so the ice cream stays frozen? I want QL. So that goes in the numerator. What do I have to provide or supply? I have to supply the work. So that's the definition of the coefficient of performance for refrigeration. What is the symbol this book uses instead of COP? It uses, no, not eta. That was for thermal efficiency. Is it gamma or beta? I think it's beta for the refrigeration. But you know what? I prefer COP. Now, what about a heat pump? Guess what? You have to have a high temperature. This time, it's where you dump heat, right? Okay, so I, it's hard to say now that's a source and that's a sink, but this is low temperature. I'm supplying work, otherwise the heat pump doesn't work. It runs in a cycle, and I have heat transfer out of the low and into the high. What is the difference between the sketch that I've shown for refrigeration and the sketch I've shown for the heat pump? Direction of work? No, that's the same. Direction of QH? No. TH above and TL below? No, that's the same. Everything's exactly the same. Guess what? The first law is exactly the same. QL plus W is equal to QH. But guess what? The coefficient of performance for a heat pump is what I desire. We don't have a lot of heat pumps around here. Why? They're just not needed. You get a lot more heat pumps up in the, in the Midwest, okay? But who knows if they have a heat pump in their home? Anybody? Not one hand is up in this room. One hand. Well, okay, you do. So if you uh, own a home, uh, like one of the secretaries in any office asked me advice a couple years ago, should I go with the heat pump or not? Blah, blah, blah. She went with it. So it's going to reduce the electric bill a little bit in the winter, not in the summer. Heat pump doesn't do anything in the summer. And so what happens is, is you pay electricity to, to pump heat out of the outdoors where it's already cold, to make it even colder in January, to bring that heat into your house. That's what a heat pump does. All right, so what do you think is a good definition of the coefficient of performance? What do I want out of the heat pump? I want a large QH. And what do you think I have to pay for? What do I have to supply? Work. True? True. So that's a good definition. You're saying these are so closely related, aren't they? Aren't they so closely related? Could I take and replace QH using this equation by QL plus W in the numerator of the coefficient of performance for the heat pump? Sure. That's just algebra. Could I then say that looks like the coefficient of performance of the heat pump sure does look like the coefficient of performance for refrigeration plus one? Uh, it's all on your perspective. Maybe we should run some examples. Let's say I was able to uh, buy two kilojoules of energy from CPS. I know they don't sell it in kilojoules. It's kilowatt hours, but so what? And maybe it's able to pump out one kilojoule out of the inside of my refrigerator in the way form of heat and remove it. How much has to be dumped off to the high temperature? Three kilojoules of energy. They started as one kilojoule of heat, but two kilojoules of work. So the heat 
work combined, it's all three kilojoules out. True? So what's the coefficient of performance for this refrigeration system for the numbers shown? One out of 2.5. Not very good. Right? Now we come over here and we say same numbers. One kilojoule, two kilojoules, three kilojoules. True? What's the coefficient of performance for the heat pump? It's what I desire over what I had to pay for, 1.5. And then if I check this equation right here, doesn't it work? 